Hello guys, uh, we are, yeah, we should be live. Uh, um, as people start joining, I can see there's already quite a few people logging in. Um, as you're coming in guys, just um, if you can, just drop a comment, just so I know everything's working completely fine. Everyone can uh, see and hear us and you're getting on fine. I'm gonna just go on our social medias as well and make sure we've got no stragglers lost anywhere. I can get them the code. Um, if you've got any <coughs> friends uh, that you know of joining you on the tasting and they, they're having trouble, just you can uh, click on the, the share button there and share them <coughs> where this stream's coming from. Um, but just as, as I do that, I'll just um, step into the holding room and I'll be back in a second, guys. Cool, I am back, guys. Uh, yeah, it looks like everyone's coming in okay. Uh, no one seems to be lost. I've just shared it on our Facebook page as well, so uh, we should see that everyone's uh, going to be all good. Uh, hope everyone's doing well. Had a nice week of horrible weather. <laughs> this has not been, not been the best. Uh, but I think the, I think the good weather's back next week. Actually, that's what um, I was just looking at earlier today. So it should be back in time. Um, and I've been trying to get preparations ready for tomorrow because we've got the the cocktail night as well. A lot of people have had their sets in, um, and it's now proving a bit of an issue that I didn't plan on music. So I'm trying to work all that out and solve the solve the scenario, which uh, should be easy enough to do. Um, and then today. We have the fantastic Glen Farkless, which is what we're all here for today. And it's a uh, yeah, fantastic whiskey. Probably one of the longest um, ones we've had been supplying in the shop, actually. Um, I think one of the, I guess, the original Sherry Cast finishes. That's one of the ones I started on, I believe. Um, with those typical kind of Christmas cake tones. Very, very nice whiskey. Um, and we've got a special guest again today. We're joined by Tim. Uh, he's going to uh, talk us through Glen Farkless and uh, all everything you need to know about them really uh, and a particular products and obviously we've got Jess who's gonna uh, host the evening um, I'm just gonna find my scrolling button now at the bottom so get it across to everyone um, and then just um, obviously general housekeeping stuff as always um, if for any reason the fee drops uh, from uh, my end um, which it's happened before actually it didn't kick everyone off which is okay but just in case if ever it goes down um, just refresh your youtube page um until you see us again um that's that's the worst that will happen uh with, uh with the other guys if ever they drop off um that's fine they can come in and out and i'll bring them back in and, and i'll just come back on to fill some time so uh, it's easy enough um we have uh what we got we've got swedish uh moment tasting still going so a lot of you guys uh, if you joined us for the first couple of swedish whiskey tastings uh, it's still available for father's day which uh is a couple of weeks time uh i will post the link at the end of today's session based on that um we've also got um an amazing offer 
um, with Glenn Farkless, which we will announce at the end. Um, after we've finished, um, I will come back on and let you know that offer. Uh, and it is only a one-time offer for this evening. Um, uh, we won't give away what it is yet <laughs> until the end. Um, but I have done a, 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 a specific link. So I know we don't normally sell actual whiskey bottles from our craft gin site, but I've actually done a product page for it just because it is a specific thing that will be available just this evening. So you'll get a link at the end to use it. Um, but other than that, I think everyone uh, should be in. Uh, let me just have a check in terms of numbers. I think we are missing just a couple, I think. Let me have a look. One, two, six. Yeah, because we've got a few watching from the from the same house. So I bear that in mind, but I think we are still missing just a couple. Uh, got Paddy Green on call. That's good. Good to know. Um, Mark, yes. <laughs> yeah, bit of a nightmare with Mark. Mark, your whiskey is on its way. Um, driving at the speed of sound, it'll be with you in the same. But, I but by the time we get this intro period done, um, it will be with you. So you, I don't think you miss out on any timing, so that's going to be completely fine. Um, yes, that's the next person joined in. I think we're getting their numbers, which is good. That's good, good. Okay, so let me um, bring uh, Jas in, uh, and then we can get the ball rolling uh, and get ourselves started. Hide that. Cool. Hello, Jess. Hey, how are you doing? Right. Yeah, good, good, good. Yeah. Um, good. So, yeah, we've got Mark's online, but obviously his set's on the way. Um, <laughs> so you'll get that soon. Uh, and I think everyone else is on, so I think we can um, get going. So I'll leave you in the capable hands of Jess, uh, everyone, and I will be in the background just chatting to you guys. Uh, we've got some really nice imagery as well we're going to bring it on. When we discuss things with Tim, um, but uh, yeah, Jas, over to you. Thanks, guys. Uh, thanks, Shane. Uh, good to see you all today. Uh, thanks for joining us for our Glen Farkless tasting. Uh, some new people, so well, Mark, Mark, <laughs> sorry, Mark. Uh, your set is on its way. Uh, some new new guys joining us as well. So Hart, um, Neil, uh, good to see you all. Um, happy birthday to Kim as well. So. Uh, it's his birthday today. He's actually going to be watching it tomorrow. Um, but uh, when you do see this, Kim, happy birthday from everyone here. Um, so yeah, Glen Farkas, let's talk. Let's talk whiskey, which is what we're all here for. Um, so Glen, when 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 uh, Glen Farkas is really really interesting to me. It's it's actually the first single malt whiskey um, that got me into whiskey, if that makes sense. Um, so it, it was it was there that I understood what whiskey can be and what it's about. So for me, it's a really uh, close kind of, you know, close to my heart. And uh, off the back of that, when when I went to Scotland for the first time, I, I drove to that distillery and, and took a tour um, of that distillery. So that's also my first actually distillery tour. Um, and and so it's, it's an amazing place. It's got a great story, great history. Uh, which we're going to cover as we go through through this evening. Um, obviously, you've got your four whiskies. Um, I'm going to ask, and I've just thought about this, uh, if everyone has a glass, maybe, maybe in about 10 minutes, you pour the 25-year-old out, so the pouch number four, which is the old, oldest whiskey. Uh, maybe just pour that out into, a, into another glass just so you can kind of uh, let it breathe and, and really open up. All those flavors the thing about glen farkless whiskies is the complexity each of the whiskies is so complex and and you know hopefully we'll go into some of why that is um but they, they're just so layered and there's so much going on that you know you want to let some of those older ones just just have a chance to breathe let them let them um start opening up so when you do get to it you know the alcohol has started evaporating a little bit and 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 you're gonna start getting actually the proper flavors of the whiskey. So so I'll say pour pour a little bit of um, pouch number four into another glass. Just you know just another another glass. And um, and and when when we get to that one, it should it should be good. Uh, I'm I'm gonna bring in Tim now. Uh, so Tim is our our rep from 
from from Porsche, but they own they they're sort of the the brand reps for Glenfarclas whiskey, um, and he's going to be joining us to take us through through this evening. Um, Hello, hey Tim! Wow, how are you? Yeah, I've got some new uh, yeah. lockdown facial hair. That is uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so last time I saw you, that's a bit of a surprise. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. Uh, is that is that something you've been growing yeah, for lockdown? Uh, yeah, I was planning on shaving it when the first pub opens, but now it's I, it might go quite soon if I'm going to be doing a few of these. But um, yeah, it's a bit odd. <laughs> no, it's a good look. I like it. It's very good. Yeah, very Thank nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so have you got have you got some whiskies? Yes, I do. I have all of the whiskies. I have the bottles, which will hopefully. Yeah. Have we lost you? Have I lost him or is, is everyone lost him? <laughs> so Tim will be joining us back in a second. Um, so you have four pouches, uh, one, two, three, and four. The first one we're gonna go through will be the 15 year old. Um, then we're gonna move on to the, ah, you're back. Yeah, cool. Sorry, was that me? I've, I did I've lose told you my to stay off the Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, cool. So, um, so I was just explaining to people uh, that we're going to go through the fifteen. So, actually, I should say, I was just telling everyone how Glen Farkness was like. You know, when I tasted the ten-year-old, it it was the thing that turned me into whiskey. Um, so when when I spoke to Tim and we sat down and we said, right, let's do this lineup for Glen Farkness, I was very disappointed that the ten-year-old wasn't in there. But when he showed me the lineup and we're starting at the 15 and we're going up to the 25, I thought, well, you know, you can't argue that's that is some impressive lineup. So I, I love trying the 21 and 25 together. I'm really glad we've got them here to be able to try. But also I feel as though so I often want to do 10, 15 and then the 21, 25. And often I completely neglect the 105, which we've got. And the 105 yeah. is one of my favorite whiskeys. So it's just I just need to do more tastings with it. That's why I sort of snuck it in. Yeah, no, I love it, I love it, and, and and it's really good because it kind of, as much as you like to see sort of the range progress, um, the 105 is just so different, and it's nice to have that cast strength thrown in into the mix, you know, just to just to very change it up a little bit. So, um, so yeah, Tim, I'll, I'll hand you over to Tim, who will kind of give us a brief sort of rundown of Glen Farkless and, and what they're about. Amazing. So yeah, my name is um, Tim and I work for Paul Roger Portfolio. So we're an agency. Um, we look after ag multiple agencies and most of them are family owned. So obviously Paul Roger, which is a champagne and then lots of um, different wines. And then at the moment, just one spirit. We used to distribute Kilhoman. Um, so we are actually, as a UK distributor, part owned by Glen Farkless a little bit. So we don't own Glen Farkless at all, but we sort of directly answer to them. Um, so that's Slightly confusing, but hopefully not too much. Glen Farkless is really, really independent. Um, and so one of the biggest things about it is how the family orientation and the family aspect to it compared to a lot of other brands and say your big brands like Diageo and Pernod Ricard. Um, it's a huge sort of cornerstone of what Glen Farkless is all about. So we very much answer the family and um, it's sort of, yeah, quite a small uh, operation up there. So what we're going to do if we have a little bit talking about the history i'll run you through it and then hopefully we'll dive into the 15 year old um so glen farkless i don't know how many of you've been there before um i did plan i put this map behind me and i think you can get it's actually back to front and maybe you get a rough idea of what's going on but it's a space side distillery so obviously this part here um so sort of equidistance between aberdeen and inverness um, and if you look up there, I'm not too sure if you can see up there. I think there's a leaf on my screen obscuring. <laughs> um, but it's right beside Abelau, um, Craig Gallicky, um, the McAllen, but Ballandalek is sort of uh, the main or closest place. Um, I, if any of you have ever been up there, you'll know it's just you throw a stone, you'll probably hit a distillery. Um, it's a farm distillery. Um, they don't exactly know when distilling started at Glen Farkless. Um, there is a picture. Um, this is like lots of distilleries because of the, the reason why there's so many distilleries up there is because of the fact that a lot of it was illicit distilling due to the tax on malt. Um, I think we lost jazz. Um, and um, so, yeah, there was lots of illicit distilling going up there. Um, there is a picture which hangs in the distillery of the farm with, 
you can visibly see um, distillery work going on. Um, and so we know at that point, maybe um, distilling was going on. But in 1836 is the first year Glen Farkless became legally, legally started paying tax. I say it's the most um, saddest day in Glen Farkless history when they started paying tax to the English. Um, but from 1836, um, go on for the rest of the sort of the lots and lots of whiskey uh, was happening in that sort of uh, era all the way up to 1900s. But 1865 uh, is sort of when Glen Farkless really came into its own when a farmer called John Grant bought the farm. Um, and he, he wanted to buy it because it was a halfway point for him between where he was farming his cattle and the market up in Elgin, up on the north coast. Um, and from there, that's where the grants, which is not to be confused with any other grants up in Speyside, like Grants Whiskey or anything like that. Um, they're all called Grant up there. Um, the Grants, John Grant um, had it for a while and he then handed it on to his son, George Grant, who then handed it on to his son, George Grant, who then handed it on to his son, George Grant who then handed it to his son, John Grant, who is our current chairman, and he has a son called George Grant. George Grant, who's the sixth generation then, um, who's our sales director, um, he has two daughters. Um, unfortunately, none of them are called Georgina, uh, but eventually they will take over. So it, when I say family business, it's it's so sort of that ethos and that sort of the strive to be completely independent of sort of big brands is really what the they're about and both john and george live on the distillery right now and everyone who works there um sort of has a place there so from then to now it's been really family orientated and glenn has played quite a huge part in sort of scottish whiskey history uh with the patterson crash and sort of many other things but it's always remembered the farm distillery in 1988 it still had, it had the second oldest herd of aberdeen cattle which i quite like um and it's it's a really interesting place. I'd, I'd implore anyone who can or is ever up there to visit Glen Farkless because the staff are amazing. Most of them live on site. Um, and there's an amazing room they've got, sort of the first class smoking lounge from the RMS Princess of Australia, uh, the ship smoking lounge as the whiskey tasting room. It's amazing. Um, and you can really get a feel for how cool it is. So it's right at the foot of Ben Rennes, which is where it gets its water supply from. Um, and also the name Glen Farkless means Valley of the Green Grasslands. It's, a, it's amazing sort of picturesque scenery um, yeah. and it's really, really worth a visit. So the, the water actually trickles down, doesn't it, from the from the, from the, from hill. From the hill? Yeah, and it comes through, this sort of bubbles through the granite um, and yeah, a really, really pure source of water. Um, yeah. And they, they keep it there in a reservoir and hopefully don't run out of it, but they have been known to due to the demand for whiskey making. Mm. Uh, I think most distilleries are feeling the, um, the drain of the, the water demand. Yeah. And you lived up in Scotland. For um, a so you? coming in. From, sorry? Did you, you lived in Scotland for sorry? a while? I, I, despite my accent, I was born in, in Jebra in the Scottish borders. Oh, and okay. for the first 23 years of my life, lived, I just don't sound it. Yeah. A secret <laughs> Scot. Um, yeah. So I've spent a lot of time, used to work up in Inverness for, um, uh, and been all over, but yeah, secretly. Yeah. Um, never really been to Speyside before I got this job, which I really, really liked, I more enjoyed the West Coast, but the Speyside is a really, really beautiful place. Hmm. Um, so, I mean, I think, should we have a sniff? I think we should. Um, um, yeah, because we can, we can move around the story as we go yeah, through the, I the I really, We'll talk, go through the distillation process, but I don't really like to leave people no. uh, too long. And it's always good, uh, especially, if we're going to properly taste it in a second to wake up the palate with that first sip. I don't know how many of people with us have already had 40% alcohol yet this evening, but this well, is 46. Judging by some of the comments, yeah, I think a few people have already been, have been having a few, having a few this evening. But uh yeah, so this is this is at 46%. So it's um we're not we're not we're not starting off uh tame, that's for sure. No. So um yeah, this is the 15-year-old, so I don't know what everyone's drinking out of. I really enjoy um Drinking out, so this is this tulip shape, uh, which you'll see a lot in the the sort of Glen Cairn configuration. I really enjoy finding a glass with a stem um, because you, it allows you to to heat it up. Um, sometimes, yeah, there's lots of different ways. You yeah. probably hear people talk about drinking whiskey. Um, I think this is the Murray method, which if anyone's read the Whiskey Bible, he talks about that a lot, warming it up a little bit, um, and it sort of opens it up a little bit more. Um, but anywhere you have it will really influence how you're going to taste it, but yeah don't know what people immediately get i don't want to tell you the tasting notes maybe if i 
ask you, Jazz, what, what you get immediately after that you sort of have a sniff of that. So the first the first thing I do notice is, you know, is the kind of the oil, not the oiliness necessarily, but the the thickness of the liquid, mm -hmm. you know, and 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 the legs around the glass, which which for me is always a good sign. So yes, so immediately when you look at the color, Glen Farkless is all natural color, and um, we absolutely do not add color to anything. So interestingly, our biggest markets are Germany, and then our second biggest market is German duty free, um, and <laughs> it's. We don't really know exactly why the Germans love Glen Fagler so much, but a big part of it is, so the Germans have really, really strict laws on what you're allowed to put on the bottle, um, and what you have to put everything that goes into the whiskey on the bottle. I don't know if many people know about, um, lots of the whiskey you will taste uh, nowadays has coloring in it, um, and it's literally caramel, and there's a big debate over whether that influences the taste, um, but we don't add any coloring. So in Germany, when you would have to put that on the bottle, um, you do not have to put that, um, you know, Glen Farkless stands alone as the sort of pure, not alone, but with a few others, with, um, you know, whiskey, yeast, and barley. Yeah. So um, this is the bottle for the 15, it's right there. Yeah. Um, and and you'll notice it's, it's a brown, brown bottle um so i think from my understanding um they they most of their bottles are brown because they they, they don't add color so so we don't we, yes we I mean, it's great to see it in the glass the different color um but we when you've got you know two 15 year olds they could be different color by different batches um so that's the main thing so i think graham robinson robinson said um should we add a wee drown water i would recommend trying all of them uh neats first of all and then adding a few drops um and oh yeah some hops mix man's already nailed it uh try the whiskey however you like um we've actually got a 105 and soda um on the side <laughs> here. uh whiskey once it's yours it's yours you can do whatever you like with it um but it's always best to actually you know, know on the, the story on the nose for me um i'm definitely getting that lovely kind of citrusy orangey orange you know that for me is classic kind of glen Farkless in yep. some form yeah um, so a few dried boiled fruity boiled fruit christmas cake yeah um you you mentioned which i get a lot for the 15 year old um we didn't try the 10 beforehand but the 15 year old um so the way we use so all of this is 100 percent oloroso sherry casks um, they all come from the same bodega in Spain, um, and this has a lot of first fill sherry. I'll explain a little bit more about that if we have a taste um, in a second. Um, mm -hmm. That is a lot oilier mouthfeel. So we have a taste. Oh, wow. So it is 46%. Definitely, whenever you try it, have a sip first, wake up your mouth. Citrus and dried fruits, yeah. Um, wake up your mouth and then have another sip afterwards. I don't know, maybe a lot of you have already cracked on. Um, but yeah, for me, it, it doesn't rush across the tongue. Um, and you shouldn't rush it across the tongue either. Otherwise, you'll get that. That burn you get in the back of your neck is when you literally send it straight back. Um, really, really savour it. But it, it, the, the, the length, and that's a lot about that oiliness, that, that really nice mouthfeel. Mm. Um, so... What I could do is explain quickly. So I would say there's, there's a few things that make Glen Farkless really special and really unique. Um, the sherry casks we use, I'd say, is one of the biggest things about that. Um, the sherry casks we use, as I said, all come from another family owned bodega in Spain. So the family Glen Farkless, the grants really enjoy dealing with uh, other family business and all the agencies they use across the world in distribution are predominantly family owned businesses as well. The sherry casks we use, um, it sounds odd, very seasoned, and then the sherry that goes into the casks, people actually drink. Um, that sounds a bit odd, but a lot of the sherry casks these days are literally chucking sherry between barrels for nine months, uh, and that sherry ends up being sherry vinegar, and then they're selling it to the whiskey industry. Um, in days gone by, uh, the, sh the sherry casks were what was used to transport the sherry from Spain to Edinburgh or Glasgow, and then they'd be used in the, in the well, bought by distilleries and used in that way. Now they are literally made to order. So Glen Farkless makes them to order. Um, I think I have a picture, if Shane is there, of maybe uh, the any kind of 
any kind of stone staves or yeah so um it's all in her earth um and it's gone but well, that's fine <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's coming back yeah, the, the quality of our casks are, are really good. Um, that, that sounds like somebody who's a rep for a brand would say. Um, they're, they're, in a good year, we could spend two million pounds a year on casks. And the staves are dried for over sort of 18 months to two years outside. Um, they are then aged for a minimum of four years with the sherry inside. And this sherry, as I said, goes on to be bottled as sherry. You know, it doesn't get thrown away or poured down the drain. Um, and we, we order our, our casks are sort of made to a really exact standard and that just comes from working with the same brand for such a long time um and yeah they they are truly truly exceptional so once they get to the distillery uh we use them four times so you can see them there drying in the sun um and sometimes you get a few orange notes it's actually because they're sort of drying under a few trees which are kicking about there which have their sort of honey orange blossom which you get mm -hmm. in the earth as well um so once we get to the distillery we'll use them four times hopefully um and if i hold that up there so these are cask samples of what i'd call a first fill and a fourth fill so you can see the color difference there yeah uh, when uh i want to i want to use a you know to those of you who know a fair bit about whiskey you'll understand that all malt is blended just by the distillery the word blends makes people think of famous grouse and grants and things like that um we use um you know we we are when they make a 15 year old it's a vatting uh from multiple different casks um 60 of them will be first fill and second fill and then 40 percent will be fourth and third fourth fill we call a plain cast you can see the amount of color coming off that is not a lot in comparison to the first fill where you get huge amounts of color so when jazz was talking about the oily mouth feel 15 year old is a really sort of oily um you know when you get that you get a lot predominantly first fill and second fill, or more so of that, you get that more oily mouthfeel and a lot more of those different sherry flavors. So that's how, as you'll see, hopefully, when we go through the range, we create a real you know, variety uh, of flavors while only using the exact same type of cask. The only second thing I want to say quickly um, is a lot of people will talk about finishes um, and be like, Glenn Farkless is a sherry cask finish. Um, finishes were started sort of, I think, made predominant in the industry by David Stewart, who does the Balvenies. Um, that's more starting in American ex bourbon oak and then finishing for say nine months in a sherry cask. If you talk to George Grant, he's quite rude about it. Um, he'll talk about get the right cask first of all, and you're all fine. So we're all about putting them in one cask and going all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. Which, there he goes. Um, Josie and Miguel Martin and the brand of sherry. I'm not too sure. I have a bottle of it somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I don't drink a lot of sherry. So you uh, only use the same bodega. You don't. You don't. You don't use any others. It's it's the one bodega, and that's all your casks from there. All of us since 1989. Yeah. Uh, all of the same casks, um, and they're they're quite thick. Um, we want to have the exact type of absorption of the sherry. You know, so if you cut a cross section through a cask, you see the exact amount of absorption the sherry's managed to penetrate the wood. Um, mm. The reason why we don't use the, the American one, uh, American white oak, as opposed to European oak. European, you get a lot more spicy flavor, uh, flavors, the cloves, deep sort of rich spices. Um, you can get European oak from all over. Ours is Spanish, which is, again, some of the highest. It's, it's hard to say, oh, this is the highest end wood, but um, it's, it's more in demand. It's more expensive. There's one sort of theme, which I'll, when I describe all the things that make Glen Fox a bit different, you'll probably see is they do not sort of, because they're independent and not owned by a bigger brand who are trying to cut costs, there's no cost cutting. Yeah. Every decision is about the flavor and the outcome of the drink. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you'll see that from... Uh... <laughs> She's just going to actually be back in a sec. Uh, <laughs> you'll see that all the bottles, so, you know, this is uh, the 25-year-old, right? It's the yes. same as the 15. It's, it's, it's not... They're not, you know, a lot of brands, and this is what I love about the Glen Parkers, is that a lot of brands, depending on the age or the expression, you know, they'll, they'll put it in all this fancy packaging to kind of inflate the cost and so on. And what you guys do, which which is one of the things I really love, is that everything is just the same, you know, yeah. and it's all about the liquid rather than fancy packages. And, and It was um, 2017. I don't know if anyone's seen our 30 and 40-year-old. And um, they're in the, they've got the classic Glenn Farkless red door sort of box. 
and you open it up. Um, that took, I think, uh, two decades to persuade John Grant to this. They kept them like, we need to update our packaging. Everyone else is doing it. Yeah. Uh, and, and he just, he just, he just didn't want to. It's the, the, pack, the, the branding hasn't changed for years and years and years. I think if, uh, you do look closely. The um, the logo, Glenn Farkless. This the R in the far. Um, that did change. Previously, it looked a lot like an N, and that's the only real change there's been in. I don't know how long. Yeah. Um, it's it's traditional to the sense that yeah, the the decisions that have been made and the changes that have been made have all been down to malting and the distillation process, and the packaging has literally been. Just go have it. If you like it, you yeah. It's not you know. Then it's, it's not eye catching, but it has become and it's been the same for so long and has been in the single malt game for as long as anyone else um, from the early sixties that it is now very recognisable. Yeah, totally, and, and it's, it's just such a classic. It's such a classic. So um, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed that. I, I, I was going to say one thing that people say with the Glen Farpers, and this this I'd like you know some of our our, our guests today. They, they notice, and you see this in various comments and so on, that people often get a bit of smoke, uh, you know, a tiny bit of smoke in the 10 and the 15 and so on. It's nothing, it's something that hasn't really ever jumped out at me. I've never really noticed it so much, but I know people do talk about it. So, yeah, so, I mean, there are tasting notes, and you'll still find them on the, uh, the website for Glenn Farkless. Uh, there always seem to be a step behind sort of us as Paul Roger. We we work in tandem, but we're always sort of crossing lanes. They sort of their new thing now is we have had to cut out any 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 comment of smoke or things like that, um, and it's to stop sort of confusion. But there is that smokiness if you do get it. So I mean, I've got the barley here, and if it was peated barley, you know, I'd be able to smell it, um, and it's sort of, it, there's nothing there. But um, it, if you get some of that with a smoke or in the 25 year old, you perhaps get burnt chocolate or something like that. That yeah. comes from the jarring of the cask. I don't know if Shane's got a picture of the toasting the barrel picture. Uh, he might do. There so you, you know. see there that, you know, the char, the inside. I mean, I, there is a difference between toasting and charring. And I don't know if someone in the, is watching or know more than me about these things. Um, it's, a, it's a light toast, I think it is for this. And when you do that, you break down some of the compounds in the wood and that allows greater absorption. Um, yeah. And also the carbon is a natural filter for sort of conjugates that you don't actually want. Yeah, yeah. And also um, I think it opens up some of those other sort of vanilla flavors from the wood and, and all this sort of stuff. And, um, and also, I don't know if you know, but you're, a lot of the sherry casks that come over, I'd imagine they're still holding a little bit of liquid. In, in the wood. Hello. Yeah. Can you see me? Yes. Um, yeah. Sorry. Lost you for a second there. The cask's holding a little bit of liquid. Yeah. So um, when they arrive, I think if you look on the Glen Farkless Facebook page, it was cask delivery day this week or last week. Um, and they arrive and they, they do have, I think, about two liters of sherry in it to, um, to keep the inside of the cask right. moist. We we pull we pull that okay. out, um, and you you are not allowed to keep it in. Uh, but the reason why you'll hear hear things about that is there are people. Well, I don't know. You you hear you hear about people who might keep it in to affect yeah. the color because a lot of people are with their eyes, um, and that's why people color it. You know, Dalmore is a twelve. You know, their twelve year old you'll see is completely dark, yeah. you know, not verging on, but very very dark, and that's all coloring. Yeah. Um, but apparently, some people. I don't think it actually properly really happens. I think it's more of a, an aggressive poke at other people by. Yeah, yeah. But I think there's actually also like there's some liquid in the wood itself. Like, you know, the cask will still absolutely. carry some of that liquid. Yes, absolutely. So the absorption into the wood is yeah, huge amount. That's why the the difference in the first, yeah. uh, it comes out. You, the first fill, the first liquid to go into it really, really leaches out. Um, Let's move on. Good place to go, yeah. Uh, While well, we talk about the 105, uh, is a bit about the distillation, but mm -hmm. everybody wants to um, get their 105. True, pouch number two. Number two. I'll just let them know uh, just before they all get 
that's a, sh a shock. It is cast strength, so it's bottled at 60% ABV. And it's the only one we have today that is actually clear. There you go. Oh, Tim, Tim, <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> he's gone again. So um, this is the 105. Uh, I'll find out why it's called 105 in a minute. Tim will tell us. Um, but yeah, if you if you put it in the glass, straight. I mean, straight away, it's it's, it's, it's totally different to the 15. So I believe it is younger, um, and the colour kind of reflects that that youthfulness as well. Um, when he gets back, he'll tell us about the distillation process. But if you guys swirl it around in the glass, obviously that alcohol content is going to, you know, um, sort of jump out at you. So, so you want to, you want to let it really swirl around and just open up. But on the nose, whoa! I mean, you know, you get past the alcohol, and it's like it's like so. It's it's drops off, so I'm going to get, I'm going to get him back in, and I'll bring him back in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, there's like loads of honey in there. You're still getting that lovely kind of orange, which I think is just classic with, with all the Glen Farkless, and you'll see that as, as we go along. Um, I don't know if anyone's getting any peppery notes in there. Maybe some toffee. Oh, yeah, really nice, really nice. So what I'd say, uh, kind of like what we did with the first one, um I'll, I'll leave tim to talk about all the sort of the distillery aspects of it uh, but we can we can kind of jump jump in while we're while we're waiting so i would say uh yeah so let me know if you're getting anything in particular but you are i mean it's lighter it's fruitier than you know than the previous one and certainly different to what we're going to get as we go along this is this is more apples you know it's that kind of white fruit that pear much fresher, much fruitier, not not so sort of rich in raisins and cake that you know that we had with the fifteen year old. But yeah, really nice. So when you go for, a, for that first initial uh, initial taste, like 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 we sort of did the first one, just a tiny dab because you know you you're going to have to get past that alcohol hit. So let's just dab a little bit on the tongue and just let kind of let that sit there. And, and sort of roll around a little bit before we go in for a proper proper sweep. Mm. And surprisingly, it's not a kick. It's not a punch in the face. Um, yeah, Tim, you know what? It's similar to tequilas, you know? So with some of those tequilas, we're getting a lot of vanilla in here. I know I know, we haven't really aged it in, in bourbon. Well, there's no bourbon. It's all sherry. But there's certainly some of those spicy characters in there. Maybe some people are getting a, that sort of lovely sort of sweet spice, some of those vanilla, cinnamony notes, perhaps. Um, yeah, Mark's got – he's got the apples. And something else, not quite sure. Yeah, pears. Um, yeah, I think I think there's going to be a touch of cinnamon in there as well, perhaps. Um, I don't think really. I don't really think we're getting coffee. Not not here. No one said that, but yeah, Nick's got the honey. So let's go for a little, a little bigger, bigger taste. Yeah. So. What, I'm, what I love about it is it's so fruity, you know, and your mouth starts working with it and it kind of opens it up. It starts giving these lovely sort of, you know, there's tingle of spiciness in there. Um, you know, maybe, is it pepper? Yeah, I guess it's, 
it's pepper it's not it's not ginger or anything like that it's definitely got a pepperiness to it uh one small yeah so yeah so okay so georgina right water um I, i'm personally not a fan of water in my my whiskies but i think it casts strength something happens and it can although this is quite complex it can be quite closed so the water just helps really open that up um so i, I would i would literally just add a, as, add a drop or two um and when i say a drop i literally would mean like you know a drop like that's for me the, the, you know tim was drinking it with um you know the 105 in soda so i would add as much as or as little as you want i'm literally going to add a couple of drops and just sort of let it open up naturally mark's loving it with the water yeah i, th I think most people are going to want the water you know um and and that will that will change the flavors it will just it will just you know take away some of those you might actually start turning into a bit more of a 10 10 year old yeah and suddenly it's opened up and, and everything's so, so much more obvious now <laughs> my, my taste was having a party yeah that's hard yeah it's undeniable it is absolutely crazy mm. yeah so maybe there is something burnt in there something burnt that's giving me you know that people maybe think is that you know they think is smoky or peaty or or something like that there's something in there that's, that's kind of it's it's got a load it's you know it's kind of got a bit more depth to it and it's giving it's giving the whole whiskey a load more flavor still got great legs yeah it definitely opens up definitely opens up when uh, when you taste it mix uh harp has got the twang of pepper possibly all spice yeah yeah two drops too yeah absolutely that's that that's that's where i'm at so interesting story when uh, i don't know i can't i can't remember if, if, if to mention it but when um, when the first grant family member bought bought the he actually bought the farm and the distillery was um was thrown in for i think it was 511 pounds in old money um and and he just you know, kind of got this distillery as part of a farm and uh, and there you go they became became whiskey makers but um I, I love the story that you know you just you just kind of buying something and you get this distillery sort of added on to it and 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 it's and it's the thing that you know builds your legacy uh georgina jess agree don't normally have water but cast strength yeah works beautifully yeah yeah it's, it's it's a lovely 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 whiskey um feels like winter today <laughs> yeah totally yeah ah oh, it's just so good and the nose is amazing so the thing about you know we we, we we've had glenn dronak some of you have joined us on that tasting uh we've got dalmore coming up uh with our cigars uh in, in a few weeks time um <clears throat> hey tim how you doing uh, I'm, i apologize i apologize that i'm now on my phone uh through oh, okay. the, the the mobile data thing i i don't know what's what's going on my my housemates are downstairs streaming a scotland 1990 game um <laughs> don't know whether that's had something to do with it um how how has the 105 been yeah so people are loving it we've, we've kind of gone through the tasting part of it um yeah. and we've added a touch of water to it um and, yeah. and people are loving the the way it opens up um you know surprising no burn and even at 60 percent, there was there was nothing kind of you know aggressive which was really yeah. interesting the, the, um, the amazing thing, i mean some people it is too strong um this is our best oh oh we lost you again mid flow <laughs> there you go yeah, back. my back back yeah, again yeah, yeah um so your best-selling product i think globally that's because it's quite easy to say 105 can be translated into any language 
Um, but this is the first commercially available cast strength whiskey on the UK market wow. uh, back in 1968. Um, so, I mean, as a few of you may know, um, single malt. Am I gone? No, no, no. You're here. You're there. No, you're good. You're good. I'm here. So, uh, from about the 60s sort of kind of thing, but previous to that, uh, you know, there was always a few single casks, but blends were sort of king uh, for a long, long time. And um, so this has been around for a long time. This, this story behind it was third generation George Grant, so George Grant Sr. for all of his mates and um, and some of the people in the wine trade. So he decided to go away. He went and found a cask. Uh, he bottled it up and he checked the proof. So it's 105 proof. So British proof is different to an American proof. 105 in British proof is 60%, where in American proof, that would be 120. Um, and so all he did, he was he wrote Glenfarclas 105, sent a bottle to all his friends, who most of them uh, would have been wine merchants back then. Um, and then say, come January, everyone was asking, saying, George, that was that was interest That was really odd. What, what was that? That's really good. I could sell that. And that sort of was the birth of Glenn Farkless 105. So since then, um, it's sort of always been there. There are a few now on the market which just sort of resemble it. I'd say, you know, most people would call it sort of a sherry bomb. Um, and, you know, a full on big, heavy sherry um, flavors. Um, the Abelara Buna is sort of there. Um, but I think there's a lot of other brands now that do cask strength sherry varieties. Um, this is made slightly differently. This is around 10 years old um, to the other rest of the range. rest of the range comes off the stills at 68% and then is watered down to blender's filling strength, which is 63.5. This goes in at 68 and in about 10 years time, hopefully it's at 60%. This is the hardest whiskey to make. So imagine trying to create a consistent product, blend a consistent product as the blender um, at Upper Glen Farkless in the vatting. Um, you've got to nail the flavor profile, nail the color. As you can see, it's in a clear bottle. The color is amazing. Um, and you've got to do that also, create consistency while also nailing 60%. To put cask strength on this label, there has to be no water added. So in everything else you'll try, and most whiskies around that don't say cask strength, there is water added to bring it down to the ABV um, that they're looking to have. Um, so there can't be any water added. So it has to hit 60. Um, I think you're allowed half a percent leeway legally um, mm. when you're putting down your ABVs. So it has to nail it. So really, really hard to make. Um, you could also make a really good cocktail with this. Uh, with this. There's a bar in the US which does the 210. Uh, it's just a double shot of 105. Uh, one of my favorite <laughs> cocktails, one of the easier cocktails that you can all try. Um, but it's good good to hear that there's a lot of positive feedback. Uh, I bet there would have been a few people who gone, what, what, what is that? Um, it's a cast strength whiskey is one of those amazing things. I mean, the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, I don't know if any of you are familiar with this, uh, we have lots of single casks, cast strength expressions. You know, get all of the flavors you will find in the rest of the Glenfarclas range in this whiskey uh, by adding water, taking your time, letting it open up. Um, so a cast strength whiskey is real joy because you can, there's so much to explore, so much to taste, and so much to do with it in comparison to the others, which have been brought down to the ABV that the blender wants you to taste it at. So this is like raw Glen Farkless. This is your what you want to do with it. Sorry, it's, um, it's a hard actually. one because, as you said, they, oh, I'm not sure. So, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's a hard one because they're blending <laughs> casks, right, to make the 105. And they've got to hit 60%. So some whiskey is going to be slightly higher in strength. Some are going to be lower in strength if they're trying to make that composition of flavor. So, so there's a lot of kind of a balancing Sorry. act going on, isn't there? Yes. Um, sort of choosing um, the cast, getting the right whiskeys, the right strengths to hit the right flavor profile. You know, there's a lot to, lot to work with. Yes. Uh, We lost him. So, so even when you go back to it in the glass, 
and you and you give it a nose and it's sitting there for a while it just really really becomes so nice and interesting we're not hitting the chocolatey flavors yet that's all still to come we're still kind of you know we're, we're at that 105 like like tim said it's kind of like a 10 year old still um there you are back yeah i'm back I'm not yeah yeah cool oh <laughs> what is happening everyone's here and there so it's, uh, apologies everyone it's not usually as chaotic as this um it's, a, it's, it's normally a lot smoother um but as i'll say as tim said it's it's kind of you know it's that 10 year old um sort of age roughly just that higher proof um so the flavors are are not as deep and rich and as complex you know the time in the cask is is obviously a lot lower so you maintain a lovely sort of freshness um but what i, what I love about this particular whiskey um and, and I, I mean glenn Parkers as as a, as a brand is and i keep saying it is the complexity um you know so when when we did do the glendronic tasting which is a classic sort of sherry whiskey and like as i was saying earlier we're going to do the dalmore which is another classic uh sort of big sherry they are obviously sherry whiskies you know so the flavor profile is quite easy to navigate um you kind of know what you're getting as you step up through the ages um you know the influence of the wood and the casks um you know in in the, in the whiskey and its age and you kind of you kind of know where you are but with this glen parker's whiskies because they're not adding color they're only aging sherry casks um and and pot maybe maybe to do with you know the the you know its area and, and its and its location the whiskies are really complex you know that you you really have to work through them and and i think everyone's going to find something maybe pick out something different compared to someone else you know, like we said, some people always talk about this smoke, which which sort of evades me. I don't I don't see it at all, um, very little anyway. Um, and 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 the flavors that we're going to go through, especially as we hit the next one, the twenty one year old, it's so different. You know, and and there's loads in there. It's, you have to kind of kind of let it sit there, which is why hopefully some of you did pour out the twenty five year old, like I did earlier. Um, and and when you come to that whiskey, you're going to be like, wow. That is phenomenal. So um, why, don't, why don't we move on to the 21-year-old, which is uh, this one here. So it comes in a lovely green tube. I, even to me, that looks that looks blue, but trust me, it's green. Um, that's a green tube, 21-year-old. There you go. Um, and that's the bottle. Again, no different to any of the others. It's, it's the same package, just a different, lay, just a different age same label same bottle um and let's look at that so percentage wise we're dropping down to 43 yep 43 um and let's pour it in now this one now okay so remember ah tim's back i'm i'm really sorry everyone for uh for dropping out <laughs> you're okay so um so you were saying we were talking, so I've just actually got everyone to pour the 21. But before we move on to 21, I just want you to finish off what you were saying about the, the 105. Um the 105, we we got to a great story behind it. Uh but basically I it's a I don't know where I cut off to be honest. Um but the the you can get is as a cask strength uh expression, there's so much you can do uh yeah. with that. Um, it's oh dear! <laughs> oh dear! Oh dear! Oh dear! Okay, so the fifteen-year-old. If you remember the fifteen-year-old, okay, so it was nice. Uh, you had the obvious sort of sherry notes that were going on. Uh, kind of hints of raisins. Uh, you had oranginess. You had that sort of. Um, butterscotch toffee kind of richness um and now we're gonna you know and then the 105 is kind of its own thing it's doing its own thing it's very different um but we're going up to 21 right uh you back i am back yeah, yeah. hopefully cool. you can hear me. 
Sorry again. No, I'm back on the phone. So we, we've moved on to the 21. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. Well, so the, the 21 and the 25, um, I don't know if everyone's got them both paused. This is one of my favorite partnerships to, to try together. So I don't want to influence what, as I said before, sort of give you or feed you tasting notes. Um, 21 for me, I think is the most well-rounded Glenn Farkless expression there is. Um, it's really quite light. Um, I would say it's predominantly second fill, uh, but they sort of never tell me what, what's going on. But you can sort of tell. Really, really light. There's no rough edges. Um, it's, it's what I would call a session whiskey. You, you literally can chuck away the cork. Um, 25 year old, really, really rich, sort of like the 15 year old on steroids. Um, big mouthfeel, burnt chocolate, um, a lot of those real beefy, clovey flavors. Um, and I think they're phenomenal to try together. Yeah. So yeah. if we have, if I, have a sniff, I can't see the comments anymore, Jazz, on oh, my phone. You. Okay. Um, so so if anyone, someone. I think everyone's just waiting for us to kind of get into the 21 now. So um, yep. let, let, let's, let's do that and then see, see what comes through. Um, on the nose, for me, it's definitely drier, right? So this is the thing I noticed about the 21, and I thought it might change because I haven't tried this or the 25 for a good four or five years. But when I did try them, I, I remember and kind of what you said. The 15 and the 25 are almost like a little partnership, and the 21 sits there in the middle doing its own little thing for me. Yeah. <clears throat> we have a 12-year-old expression. So if anyone sees any the 12 year olds our core range consists of 10, 15, 21, 25, 30. Um, it's amazing we have a 30-year-old in our core range. Um, uh, but the, we do have a 12, which we now no longer have in the UK market. So if you see a 12-year-old kicking about, um, it won't be available for much longer. So if you feel like the 12-year-old, I'd say, is um, more similar to the 21. Uh, and the 12 is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. It's mm -hmm. one of my favourites. Yeah. Problem. So but, you're saying this one's quite dry? Absolutely. For me, it's, it's, uh, this one's 100% Oloroso, right? Is it Oloroso? Oloroso, yep. yep. Or, or every, everything's 100% Oloroso. Oh, okay, right. So for me, this one is a lot drier than, than the other two, yep. than the 15 and 25, which, which we'll come on to. And I really noticed that. So I, I think I'm going to have to disagree with you a little bit. So for me, yeah. the 25 is the one that I could chuck the top away and drink. Now, I, the people that know me on, on these tastings will know that I generally don't go for the above age 15 or 18 whiskies, right? I, I sort of lose interest because it becomes too woody, too dry, right? You get too yeah. much tannins. And this is where I feel this one kind of hangs around. Okay, it's yeah. just on that border of dryness, compromising that fresh fruitness, fruitiness. Yeah. Right? yeah. And so for me, it's a lot. It's a little bit chewier. It's a little bit harder to work. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, if I was having chocolate, dark chocolate, I would pair it with this one. Yeah. So I think it has a lovely bitterness to it, and then mm -hmm. the dryness. But that's that's me, right? That's me. I, what 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 do you think? Uh, me personally. I, I, the 21 is the best. It's one of the first uh, Glenn Farkless's. So when I joined the company, um, I was sort of handed this uh, and said, here, have it. And I still, I came from a, I used to do run a whiskey bar and do whiskey tastings. Um, mm. And the idea of being given 21-year-old whiskey sort of casually, uh, yeah. it's a novelty. I don't think it's still, that has really worn off yet. Um, yeah. The ability to be able to have access to such amazing bottles of whiskey. Um, and I think the 21 sort of blew my mind at that point. And I did think, I think I preferred it with the lack of, I think 25's got a bit too tannic for me. Um and I think the 15-year-old, yeah. I think the ABV is a little bit too high for what it is for me. Okay. Uh, sometimes I have yeah. the 15-year-old and I bring it down a bit uh, okay. just because that's where I prefer it. Um, but if I, if I was pushed, I'd say that the three of my favorites would be the 21, the 105, and the 10-year-old, all for different things. Yeah. Um, but the 21-year-old is just for every kid just to sit down and really, really get into it is, yeah. is beautiful. Yeah, you see, see, we, we we would not sit down and have a whiskey together. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be interesting to know in the comments um, what everyone else seems to. So Mark Mark has pointed out that he gets a hint of smoke. 
from the 25. I assume now Mark's got his whiskey. But yeah, he's got his whiskey. <laughs> yes, he did. Yeah, well, my wife dropped him off, so he, he's all good. Yeah. Huh? Um, yeah, but he says it's a lovely drop. Um, oh, I'm back. You're back. Uh, Paddy, yeah, love the dryness of it as well. He's loving that. Yeah. Um, I do think, I'll tell you what the, the thing is, a mate, I, I love the 43% on this. I think I think it's kind of almost perfect for this. So 43 is sort of where we do everything uh, across the board, uh, apart from our family casks, uh, which are our collection of single cask expressions. If you ever see a Glen Farkas family cask, buy a dram, try it, buy the bottle. They are phenomenal and completely unique. Um, but apart from that, most of the range is at 43. The 10 year old is at 40 though, because uh, mm. it's sort of more accessible. Yeah. And the 46 is at, the 15's at 46. Because that's how I liked it. I love the way still remember at some point liked it that way, um, and that's, it's it's quite nice. But most of it's a forty-three. So Tim, um, Tim, one Tim thing, Fandle, who's one of our yeah. regulars, has said that the twenty-one is his winner so far. Good. It's it's, so uh, it's a good uh, name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I think now though what I love about what I do like about the 21 year old is that now you're starting to see some a little bit more of that coffee chocolatey you know you're kind of getting that that orange that I think is really really sort of synonymous with Glen Farkless starts turning into maybe burnt orange or a little hint of marmalade or it's kind of verging on that sort of cooked cooked fruit now you know rather than sort of yeah apples and pears and fresher fruits it's kind of getting more complex as you go along yeah 100 percent um i think the uh the 21 so the the really fun thing about glen Fox is uh so you'll you'll probably see if you people are into whiskey and um, lots of people have market their brick brands by sort of having master blenders or um I don't know, there's lots of weird names for the guys that actually do the blending. Uh, so it's, it's Richard Patterson, um, he's sort of the White Mackay guy, sort of, you'll see him doing there. It's a bit of a personality. Uh, Brian Kinsman from, um, and David Stewart from William Grant. And all these people, you know, they sort of put it to the forefront and really, really sort of big personalities. Glenn Farkless, um, actually something I should have mentioned at the beginning, um, we're Distillery of the Year 2020, uh, and we have the Distillery Manager of the Year 2020, which we won at the, won at the tail end of last year. So um, Callum Fraser, who is our production manager, um, he does it all with um, our, I think the title is Head of Stocks and something, um, but he's effectively the accountant. Um, and they do it all together, uh, and a little bit with George Grant, um, and it's just a team that sort of do this, and that's really how um, they've managed to keep some of the whiskey so consistent over the years, um, mm. because they're always using a team of two, uh, which they say makes it a lot easier um, to keep the consistency. Um, but it's not really marketed in a big way. I think it's one of the small, charming things about Glen Farkless. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what, Tim? The, the 21 looks like a real winner. People are yeah. Cool picture. Loving it. I, I think I, I missed you. I think the download of the picture on my phone, I lost some of your audio. Hello? Can you see me at all? Oh, my God, this is a disaster. I don't know. <laughs> Hello? Hello, I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can't. You're not moving, but I can hear okay. you. No, okay. I'm not moving. Okay. <laughs> no, you're back. You're back. Uh, I, think the, I might have to refresh. I think the picture download put me out of whack. Um, yeah, his, his signal was going. I could see it going. <laughs> I knew it was going to drop off. Am I gone now? No, you're there. You're there still. You're there still. Okay. <laughs> cool. Um, I don't know where this gets stuck. The um, so twenty one slightly winning. Yeah, I think at the moment uh, has anyone tried twenty five yet? Just obviously make comments on that. I know that recommending to try them together. 
Uh, I think Jess is back in. Let me just bring him back in for one sec. Oh, sorry, I didn't realise. Is it Shane? Yeah. <laughs> give, me, uh, give me one sec. I'm looking, bring at, I'm looking at a freezing picture of Jess. Uh, yeah, he, yeah, he is supposed to be joining. I can hear him. Yeah, there he is. I'll bring him back in. Give me one sec. I've got two of you now. <laughs> Have you got me now? Am I back? Am I back? I, I can hear you. Okay. Good. Yeah, sorry. What a disaster. I've never, never got this back. And we can call this evening a win for whiskey, but not for technology. You know, let, let's let's move on to twenty five because I think everyone is is moving on to to you know. Yeah. So everyone, if I if you can, or if you do, keep a little bit of twenty one. It's great to compare. Yeah. So I, I think I think you know, I'm only I'm only saying it now. I think the twenty five twenty one is probably people's favourite. Yeah. So now would be a really good opportunity to. Um, so I haven't, in all of this, I've, I've managed to talk about the Glen Farkless in um, a very weird way and sort of missed a lot of the distillation parts. And I'm going to skip over that again and talk about um, the Dunnage warehouses. So the warehousing at Glen Farkless is really particular. Um, what I mean by Dunnage um, is sort of how you would imagine. Uh, I don't really want to ask Shane to put a picture up because I think that's what threw us out of whack last time. Um but how you'd imagine the storage of the whiskey, it's all about how the casks are stored. And at Glen Farkless, they're stored on their sides, only three high, with stone walls, earth floors, and slate roofs. And what that does, it creates a really consistent temperature and lots of airflow for the casks. Um, and what this is in contrast to is what the industry standard and the norm is. Um, it's just big warehouses stacked of 12 barrels high. They're all on top of each other on pallets as fours. Um, and I don't know if many of you have heard of, sort of the angel share before. Um, it's a term used to describe the evaporation of alcohol each year. Um, Glen Farkless has an extraordinary sort of some large stocks of very mature whiskey. And our core range goes up to 30 year old and being able to try the 25 year old is, is amazing, quite special. Um, but um, yeah, the, the style of warehousing creates a lot more, means that at 25 year old, we can be a lot more consistent when we're vatting um, at the end because a lot of our casks have been through a very similar process together. Yeah. So you, you also have the larger yeah. stocks. Yeah, as in, uh, so there's, it's, um, so the way the, the family casks, as I briefly mentioned earlier, um, the family's always been putting away a large amount of stocks. Um, they were involved in the Patterson crash, which sort of happened in the early early 1900s. Um, and from then on, they've always never made more than they could. They've never borrowed money to make whiskey. But also because of that, in living family memory, during the 80s, I don't know, uh, I wasn't around in the 80s. Um, in the markets globally um, for when uh, suddenly there wasn't a huge demand or they produced and um, they called it the whiskey lock because they could have literally filled locks with whiskey um people like diageo closed five six seven distilleries um, a lot of them are reopening now which is quite exciting um uh, but who knows what they'll sort of that will that will bring but um yeah. glenn farkless during the 80s actually increased production a lot of times when there's been a slump glenn farkless have increased production and yeah. that's one of the benefits of being so dependent and not being tied to a big company that needs yeah. to cut profits Absolutely, and that's, that's really stood in their favour, you know, because it's allowed them to create the family cast, keep consistency going throughout their range, yeah, uh, which has been really good. Um, so, on the flavour profile of the 25. Yeah, I get... It's the, the mouthfeel, not the, the length of the whiskey, some people kind of sometimes talk about. For me, this is one of... It's got the best. I mean, it just lingers. And it's, I think that's slightly to do with the sort of tannic nature of it, as we sort of mentioned. Uh, but for some, this might be too much oak, too much wood. Uh, but hopefully because of the quality of the cast we choose, um, you really can, you know, have it all the way to 25 years old and still create because of the, we're vatting with quite a large number of casks at that age, hopefully create a really, really well balanced and really sort of phenomenal. 25-year-old product. 
I think the finish has a touch of dryness to it. It has a bit of tannins. That's where that's where I'm getting it. But on the palate and when I'm actually drinking the whiskey, for me, it's just, it's, it's kind of, it's lovely, those marmalade flavours, the, the coffee sort of kind of fighting against the chocolate. For me, it's really the, the burnt, Yeah, I'm, I'm a big burnt chocolate in the 25-year-old. Yeah. But it's not bitter, which I love. You know, it's not... Yes. So you you may find with other sort of expressions this age from other uh, places or maybe single casks, you know, they won't have, it won't, it won't be blended from a large amount of casks. Um, so they won't have a lot to work with. I think, as I've just said, being able to work with lots of casks means we are able to create something slightly balanced, you know, with that tannic and, you know, real powerful oaky woody flavours of the Oloroso sherry and the Spanish oak, but also being hopefully very balanced. Um, Paddy just had a question. I asked everyone to pull the 25 year old out earlier on, so it yep. opened up. Yeah, Paddy asking, would the 21 year old also be, you know, would it have been sort of nicer or opened up had we had we pulled out earlier as well? I, I think so. Yeah, um, these aren't they, they should be quite robust uh because they've been blended using a lot of casks if it was a single cask bottled at cask strength um i would even say drink it closer to when you're pouring out if it's a really old whiskey um but for me it's sort of a bit of a journey try it at every stage um mm -hmm. so i've still got some of the 21 year olds and i think it has been 10 minutes since we first started tasting it um and um yeah, so it it's great to, if you if you're drinking your your, your dram um, too quickly, you'll you'll miss some of the evolution. But I wouldn't. I'm not going to say that it's better or worse anyway. Um, I'm saying try it every way and find exactly how you like. It. Yeah, yeah. I, I I think also what I like is that that pepperiness is sort of toned down. Yeah, and, and I know it's you expect it to be more mellow, but. Yeah. It's also still so complex, right? It's not. It's not just. It's not just a smooth, mellow drink. You know, there's still a lot going on. There's, there's a little bit of heat and, and stuff. I, I like it. Yeah, I mean, it's just yeah, really rich. Um, we often have people who are big Isla drinkers who really like a smoky whiskey. Um, so you often think about it. So if you, sometimes if you imagine a flavor wheel. Um, and, you know, in big smoky one direction or fruity or estery and, you know, tar and chocolatey and um, but smoky, you know, this is big because this, this is sort of as far and as punchy as you can really get with a with a sherry matured whiskey. Um, so, yeah, it's really it shows it, it shows its age and it's really, really nice and rich. Yeah. Well, Mark's decided he loves the 21 over the 25. Yeah, cool. So, so that's good. Um, I still think I'm, I'm on the 25. Yeah, really? good. Yeah. I mean, it's not. I'm not disappointed about it at all. I think the 25 year old for me um, is well. I mean, it, it there's nothing really else like it on the market um, for the price it's at. Uh, another thing about Glen Farkless is you'll always find it's sort of a lot of people call it one of whiskey's best kept secrets because it's. You know, by those in the know, they sort of think that it is some of the best quality um, for the cheapest prices. Uh, and a lot of that is about, A, we have the stock to be able to price our older whiskey where it is priced. Um, and we really want people to be drinking it uh, as opposed to sort of stashing it away um, and drinking it and being able to buy another bottle. So instead of, I mean, I think Bal Blair's 25-year-old for their new range is something like £350. Um, and this is just north of 100 pounds and the 25 year old between 125 ish um and yeah it's i don't know it's it's just phenomenal value which i love about grand because it's sort of yeah I think there's a question like, are you experimenting with other casks uh there are other casks there's some quarter casks uh which are also the rosso sherry but they're the ones which are 250 liters um they are kicking about, but they've been there for a while. Um, and I don't know what's going to happen to them because you can't keep them there for too long. Otherwise, they sort of disintegrate. 
well, it you get the quarter casks really take on flavor and really oxidize a lot faster than the bigger casks. Uh, we have cognac casks kicking about. It's, it's normally quite secretive. There are some port pipes, um, okay. which are really big barrels. Um, there have been a few port releases of Glenfarclas. They're really, really quite hard to find. Um, there are a few. Um, there's not a lot of American oak kicking about, um, but there are a few. And the, when they get released, they're sort of quite special. So mm. um, I haven't been out in the last few years. Yeah, that'd be really good. Uh, Tim also thinks that 21 is a winner for him. So uh, you were named. Yep. Yeah. Good, good. <laughs> One thing I was going to ask: Do they? Do, you know, we talked about the the casks, the use of the casks, and you yeah. showed us the color uh, fading. You know, with the old, you know, the, the more the cask is used. There you go. Yes. So, with the twenty-five and the twenty-one-year-old, do they move them from the cask they might have been in? And move them into something that is at fourth fill or third fill, just to help with that slower maturation process. Uh, I, I believe if they're swapping between casks, it's because something has gone wrong with the previous cask. Um, okay. But they're not sort of finishing it. You know, they don't they don't vat it together and then finish it in a different type of cask. Um, it just they have lots of different casks which produce different flavors in their own right, and then they know their recipe to bring it all together to create, um, you know, blend into the product they want, like the 25. Um, so it's not really a case of swapping between, uh, it's just a case of monitoring all the different types which produce, you know, well, the four types the first fill, the second fill, uh, third fill, and fourth fill. Yeah, yeah. And another thing I haven't mentioned, um, the, there's two types of casks. Uh, in size, we have hogsheads, which are about 250 liters, and sherry butts, which are 500. So that again makes another difference in the flavor. Yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah. So the size of the cask is going to affect how yeah. much interaction. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think it's been 50-50 between the 21 and 25. I'm, I'm, I'm saying. Interesting. The twenty-five, the twenty-five usually wins, um, but I think it's normally because it's not every day you get to drink a twenty-five-year-old. Um, I'm always voting for the ten-year-old, um, but when you're choosing between twenty-one and twenty-five, I sometimes prefer the twenty-one. Um, but it depends. Twenty-five is great for say you know post-meal. Twenty-one, you know pre-meal. It's, it's there's two different styles for yeah. whatever you want to them for. Yeah, totally. I mean, also, I think the 15 is my, my one of my sort of would-be go-tos. You know, When people think of Barclays, they often think of, depending in the market, the 105 or the 15. The 15 has just been so reasonably priced for so long. And yeah. it's just an amazing example of a purely sherry, Oloroso sherry cast matured whiskey. Not a finish. Um, and the price point as well is exceptional. Yeah, it's, it's so good. And I love that, just the fruitiness. The complexity, you know, it's just it's it's so good, it's so good. And I always say to people, you know, Dalmore, Balvenie, and nothing against these brands because you know we love them. Um, you know, Drone, they 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 the, the crowd pleases, right? They're obvious in terms of what you're going to get from the whiskey. Whereas for me, I always tell my customers that Glen Farkless is that one that, you know, if you're a real whiskey drinker. And, and and you want something that you really have to kind of work through and play with and, and kind of you know sit and get something different every time. That's that's your whiskey for me. Um, sort of one of those things once you discover. I think I've managed to tell the story in a very bad way and roundabout <laughs> way. Um, really touched on the distillation, um, but uh, and between all the cutting in and out, it's it's one of those ones that you sort of. If you're not won over by the the story, the liquid is definitely it's cut above the rest. Hopefully, totally, totally. Well, look, Tim, thank you very much for joining us. Um, no, thanks, thank you, thanks, sorry, everyone, for your patience. Um, and I really hope that you've enjoyed everything so far. Um, I'm sure everyone's given you a big, big round of applause, Tim, um, for taking us and, and and taking us through through the whiskies that you've got. Um, Cheers. And guys, as always, uh, if you want to have any 
any of the wish list tonight there's, there's a ten percent discount on, on everything so we've got we've got the um offer on the so what we've done everyone is i'll just i'm just going to change this up here on the on the scroller so we've got a father's day offer um with the zen farkless 25 year old um so if you buy it tonight it's going to be only 109.95 um and yeah we normally set it for 130 um i know the cheapest masters of malt did it is about 125 plus postage which is exactly the same so um it's basically a 20 pound saving uh, on the 25 year old um but it's only on that link uh for this evening so i'm gonna post that into the comments here as well which hopefully will work um and then if you do want to order any of the others though the 21 or the 15 year um you know drop us a a message um on social or email um and we can sort that out for you and get it get it ordered in um again apologies for the the technical issues in the wi-fi tonight guys um just one of those nights i guess um but i guess yeah like everyone said the whiskey makes up for it um yeah. incredibly incredibly good whiskey um and, and yeah like, like you said tim is it's it's such well-priced whiskey for the for the for the quality of it you know it's, it's amazing um but like you said it's because they sit on the one of the largest stockpiles of it so i guess they can afford to to do it <laughs> um but um yeah yeah again thank you tim for joining us um it's been great to have you here um and obviously everyone else as well thank you for, for buying tickets and joining us um we've got the swedish uh, which i do have a, a link for if no one's done that that's actually on father's day itself um so if you haven't got tickets for that yet uh, you can still get those online um, i'll post that link here as well um and then um yeah if not we'll, we'll see you guys at the next one there will be we've got our uh, cocktail night tomorrow evening uh, but after that uh, going to sunday there will be um the release for our next lot of uh, sales um, for um, ticket tasting. So we've got, I think we've got the um, next up is the 4th of July weekend, and we're going to have a bourbon and uh, American gin tasting. Uh, and then the week after is, what's that, Swedish jazz or is it going going? Swedish. Glengoyne and Swedish. It's Glengoyne and Swedish, yeah. So Glengoyne whiskey and, and Swedish uh, gin. Um, and then I believe at some point towards the end of the month, uh, we also have Amroot uh, with, is it Master Stiller from Amroot coming on? The owner? One of, one of the others? I think it was. Uh, the, the, the global brand ambassador is coming on. Oh, the brand ambassador, yeah. So he's coming on. Um, and we're also, just for anyone that's into their rums, we're squeezing uh, a plantation rum tasting at the end of this month in June. So before July hits with all those ones, um, there is going to be one more in, in June that we'll squeeze in. Um, but we'll send out the email with that in next. So. Um, Tim, sorry, I just got asked Tim. Tim. There's a there's a request there's a, there's a challenge has been laid. Can we can we do a Paul Roger tasting? <laughs> Getting small samples of Paul Roger <laughs> is hard. I'm in charge of the 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 wine sampling at the moment, um, and we can do that just with little wine bottles and argon gas. Yeah. <laughs> Unless we're doing a full bottle of Paul. Uh, tasting. <laughs> we'll just want to watch you and me get drunk on six bottles of champagne. I think it might be quite difficult. Yeah. <laughs> I had that, someone, someone came in the shop the other day and asked the same question. I was like, there's so many factors that don't work. I said, you, you know, if, you, if you're happy to spend out and buy four bottles, that's fine, but you have to drink four bottles on the evening. <laughs> it's just it's impossible. <laughs> I'm sure that's something we can definitely do as lockdown is lifted or, um, or you know, over, over, a day at the shop when everyone's back spending yeah. lots of money and moving the economy. Yeah, and Tim, you'll join us at Christmas, right? To do a barrel top tasting in the shop? A hundred percent. I very much enjoyed it last time. Very, it was, it was quite busy. Yeah. Lots yeah, of fun. No. Be good. It'll be good. Excellent. Bye, guys. Excellent. Thank you all very much. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Tim, big thanks again. Thank you for having me. Sorry about my internet. It's all right. No problem. We got through it. Everyone enjoyed it. Yeah, it's been some of the and, comments. And hopefully everyone everyone learned something different and found something new that they didn't know before.
Excellent. Good stuff. So, yeah, thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks, Tim. Thanks, Jess. Uh, and we'll see you.